And Isis, if you could share your screen, mm -hmm. that would be great. Could you show the agenda, Ms. Isis, please? Welcome, everybody. Um, we are going to get started in just a few minutes, going to let everybody come in. Um, so we're going to get started in just a few minutes. All right, welcome everybody to this Opal RT boot camp. Um, we are going to get started just about now. And it looks like since we are in a webinar format, we won't be able to capture all of your beautiful faces, um, but we wish we could. So through throughout the webinar, uh, we may be taking a few photos. Also, I wanted to let you know that this webinar will be recorded. Um, right, so on with the official Welcome. Um, my name is Brittany Vandewerf. I am the Public Relations Specialist for New Mexico EBSCOR, and I am helping host this meeting along with Isis Serna and Sarah Pache. Um, a few housekeeping things before we begin. Uh, you should know that this will be recorded, and you should have gotten a notification, notification from Zoom. But in case you didn't, um, the webinar today will be two hours instead of one. Uh, our instructors simply brought together so much astounding and awesome information and examples that we decided another hour was necessary. N but if you can't stay for the second half, don't worry. Uh, it will be recorded and we'll put this up on our YouTube channel and our website. Uh, I also wanted to let you know that um, you can ask questions at any time by typing them into the Q&A box and my partner in crime, Isis Cernat, will uh, shoot them to the relevant speaker and we'll get those answered for you. You can also put them in the chat, but we prefer that they go into the Q&A box. All right, and next uh, we have, I just wanted to plug a fantastic lineup that we have put together for 2021. Um, in January, yes, yeah, thank you, Isis. In January, we're gonna have Carl Benedict and John Wheeler put um, putting on a GitHub training. In February, today's presenters will possibly February or later in the spring be back to do a Typhoon training. Uh, and then in March, April, and May, you will hear from new New Mexico Smart Grid Central faculty, Klaus Danielson, uh, Hamed Nadimi, and uh, Yu Ting Yang. Um, and that, that will be shown on our, our website if you don't necessarily see that schedule up on the screen right now. Um, right, so enough about 2021. We've got a lot to cover today for today's webinar. So I would like to introduce um, Olga Lavrova from New Mexico State University, who will take it from here. Okay, thank you, Brittany, and welcome everyone. It is great to see so many participants. I see that there are 28 uh, participants attending, and we are very glad to see you here. So we wanted to make sure that this Opal RT bootcamp is very productive to a wide variety of our EBSCOR researchers and our uh, collaborators who are not necessarily in EBSCOR. I know that there are participants who are not part of EBSCOR who have signed up for this Opal RT training. So we wanted to make sure that we include three different examples of how Opal RT can uh, fill in your research needs in terms of um, modeling some of the communication functions or some of the electrical hardware functions. So if we could possibly go back to our schedule um, in terms of showing examples. Uh, 
the shows that we wanted to address communications and microgrid controls and integration of PV plus battery storage systems. And the structure of this class is such that we will go through an overview of what Opal RT hardware is and explain why it is needed. Uh, I hope that majority of you were able to uh, to complete your homework that we have assigned. I hope that homework was not extremely scary. So we hope that you were able to complete this homework and so that you already have some information about what Opal RT is and how we use it. So I hope that most of you are also familiar by now with the way to um, to use Simulink with Opal RT. So we wanted to make sure you have some of this background so that we don't um, sort of jump over any uh, anybody's head when we show our examples. So with this, I would like to introduce um, our research faculty who will be doing the uh, examples in the tradition. First and foremost, uh, Dr. Hamad Nademi who is faculty at uh, NMSU in Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. We are very grateful for his experience and being able to do those examples. Uh, Dr. Nataraj Pragalapati, who is also our postdoc researcher at NMSU working on some of these projects. Also Dr. Sijo Augustin, who is also our postdoc at NMSU working on similar projects. And we also have an undergraduate student assisting in this demonstration, uh, Stephen Lucero, who you might see on your screens shortly. And so with this, I'll hand this off to Dr. Nademi, and I hope this will be all very productive. Thank you very much, Dr. Lavrova, uh, for your kind introduction and also overview on this hopefully thoughtful webinar. So let me share my screen with you. So since my internet connection at home is, is not actually strong, so I turn off my video to boost the internet connection. But for later on, I would turn on if it needed. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Yeah. Hello everyone and thank you very much to the all participants around the state, different locations for this seminar uh, related to the, the hardware in the loop and also um, the, the based on of course Opal RT simulator which is one of the, the, the very widely used uh, real-time simulator and hardware platform to do the kind of real-time simulation and testing. Actually, for, for many applications, uh, maybe the examples for today is just um, cross-section between the, the computer science, uh, machine learning techniques, and the hardware development kits, and applied to the or integrated into the, the power and energy systems, specifically microgrid. But these kind of platforms usually are, are really helpful and useful for um, doing the test and also for design validation for, for many applications from aerospace, power, uh, also uh, automation areas. So I know that there are uh, participants from uh, computer science and also from electrical engineering, some people from industry. So I try to, to make it in some way it could be really useful. But uh, hopefully my, my intention is that at the end of this, this uh, actually time slot and also the, during the entire uh, presentation for, for this webinar, you can learn actually something because for uh, I, I'm working in, in power, my background is electrical engineering, but anyway, uh, we need to learn from computer science, other domains and vice versa. Uh, so this, this uh, real-time simulator is, is very kind. So don't be worried about, and uh, this is not a monster <laughs> hardware platform, uh, but for students specifically, I made this a slide as a, to, to begin my presentation. Uh, this is very important for you to know that based on the, the actually the recent development and also the, the <clears throat> what is foreseen for the next future, next five, 10 years in, in many engineering and technology field is that this is something, this technology is really needed 
and uh, for the students they have to develop their uh, skill sets so i would say uh, if you are if, if you can be able to work model and uh, work with this this uh, real-time hardware and simulator from the modeling to the end execution then this this is you gain a skill set which is in demand for for, for the future so uh, this is not just uh, is being used this technology is not being used obviously for educational institute or, or universities but it has been a new norm actually for for industries utilities um, and, and many other agencies actually to, to use this kind of real-time simulation uh, approach or techniques or technology uh, during the design phases and processes. So this is obviously very good uh, uh, platform to be able to do the, the, the test. And then later on, as we move forward during my slide, you can learn what would be the, the really key advantages by doing these real-time simulators. And because the first step is to, to realize that why uh, do we need this kind of real-time simulator and why we should not use the offline simulator, for example. So the key part is that the real-time model um, should be uh, developed to represent the fair and accurate method uh, for, for the, for example, the, the system of interest for the issues we want to deal with or, or uh, do some uh, investigations analysis actually and then as i said that uh, recently uh, did this all of this uh, opal rt platform are being used for for doing some uh, analysis during the design phases for distributed energy resources for automation companies utilities uh, during the, the design phases and in the beginning of their uh, model or, or solution validations and as you see here at the uh, left side of this picture, for example, the 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 left side, uh, you, the left side, you will see the one just uh, hardware board, right? This hardware could be the external device. The device could be controller, for example, and then the the tall platform on the uh, right side, you will see that's the like a simulator, the, the hardware simulator, and then you will see in the what is inside that simulator uh, is, is your model actually could be developed and run in a real-time manner on this real-time simulator while the external device under test or controller or could be motor, could be Raspberry Pi for computer science, NVIDIA, Jetson, um, machine learning algorithms uh, executed on the, 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 the computer science related hardware to talk to this simulator and then to be integrated into the like model of energy network, power network, right? And then uh, as you can see, there would be a lot of uh, digital um, and analog input output could be replicated, the, the measurement devices, uh, the, the actuators, and so on. So uh, as I said that, uh, in, in, this is the, the, the V-shape, this diagram you will see uh, in, in this city called the V-design, actually allows multiple of engineers from different domain to, to be involved in design modeling project, to use that model to communicate uh, the knowledge of the system uh, under development, the system we want to study uh, in an efficient and organized manner. And as you will see, the, the real-time simulation actually these days in industry sector covered the, the most part after online simulation is basically offline simulation when you just develop the, the key architecture, the the the, like single line diagram of, of your system. And then when it comes to the design, prototyping, integrating the different devices and from like a cyber physical uh, modeling and system, and then you can verify and validate your design solution modeling and then test it on the prototype at the very last stage. And the good thing is that you can also uh, do the closed loop uh, design changes in your, your study by changing some uh, variables, for example, controllers, for example, parameters. And then you will see by changing those parameters, you can adjust and then achieve the intended uh, performance operation of, of your system or your algorithm, for example. So the key point is that you can uh, actually model 
the physical system or real system as close as possible uh, resemblance to its physical counterpart. And you said that, and, and, and as I just said, you know, these all power and energy systems or engineering um, domains are uh, being interconnected to each other. So we are living in the multi-domain uh, system. So we need some uh, tools or some real-time platforms to be able to handle this kind of um, cyber physical uh, modeling or analysis or model-based uh, design uh, <clears throat> solutions. So um, for, for all uh, computer science and electrical engineering uh, students or, or the people working on, we, we have heard a lot this smart grid concept or, or the world. So the smart grid itself means that we are integrating two infrastructures, architectures. One is the electrical uh, infrastructure. The other one is actually the, the informing information systems, communications infrastructures uh, to be able to work together in a secure manner. And then uh, you can see that the cyber security is, is the key for the whole platform. And then you will see for example, from the, the distribution residential level, uh, commercial, industrial, to the transmission system, a long way to the distribution plan. The distribution could be still the traditional power generation and also could be based on the uh, renewable and distributed energy resources. Could be solar, PV, wind, battery energy storage, and also, and so on. So uh, the reason is that, as you see, to increase productivity, reduce the CO2 um, emission, uh, efficiency will be increased, empowering consumer, and so on. For computer science, this, the, the key point is that for, to, to achieve such a smart grid system, so we need a smart network, usually based on the wireless communication system, for, for example, energy management, to get the knowledge of all the loads uh, transmission system and also the, the generation uh, platforms, whatever it, whether those uh, uh, the, the, the generation system is based on the renewables or traditional systems. So we need to have a lot of information and all the subsystems should talk to each other. So then uh, then you can read this this is just for power grid. The airplane or aircraft is another perfect example. The aircraft has mechanical aspect, aerospace dynamics, the electrical system, electric motors, right? They are like a multi-domain. The aircraft itself is like a multi-domain system. And therefore, we need the, the real-time simulation and testing to be able to verify the both uh, communication system protocols um, could be the, the, the data analytics, because we need to have a lot of, collect a lot of information. Therefore, uh, to, to develop such a system, it's very costly actually to build the whole system we are dealing with. Then we model it using the, the existing or most advanced tools, modeling tools, modeling uh, technologies or, or methodologies, and then we can be able to integrate all pieces in a real time manner to get the, to verify the, the design, the, the concept, or, or to apply to the prototype and so on. So the purpose or the key contribution of real-time simulation is the, the testing to accurately produce the simulation output. Uh, as I said that in the same length of the time as it could be very close to the physical counterpart, for example. And then in this manner, we can replace the, the real hardware by real-time domain model. In this way, we can just do some uh, destructive tests. We can actually identify the flaws and uh, some design issues earlier during the design processes. And then, of course, you can reduce the, the development effort costs. And then uh, if you need to, for example, uh, if you need to, for example, uh, just integrate the controller you designed, for example, the Raspberry Pi based on the machine learning algorithm into, for example, control the microgrid or power system, as an example, then that device could be device under test, could be integrated as an external hardware or controller uh, into the closed loop. And then you can verify your design with the replicated or very uh, close um, modeling for, for the 
system of interest could be run in real time manner into the uh, on the like Opal RT simulator as we are focusing today. The, let's dig into a little bit into the what does it mean when I um, or, or when, when you see uh, a lot of discussion about the offline simulation and also the, the real time simulation. The offline simulation is that obviously when we deal the modeling, the model could be even from very simple to very complex or complicated system could be the mathematical functions, expressions, equations in time domain, for example. And then those variable states are, are solved actually as a function of variable or state at the end of the, 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 the time step. But we should also, um, so it seems that the simulation time step is the, the time interval, those all the state and the uh, like control variables, all the system variables should be uh, solved and find their solutions at the end of each time step. When you do this offline simulation, as you will see here, for example, if we start from uh, time interval Tn minus one, the next step ahead is Tn, right? And then the next one obviously is Tn plus one. Focus on Tn minus one and Tn. You see the, the functions, Ftn is actually the function of all the variable states for the your system you are dealing with. So the solution actually is identified like in the middle of time step or prior to the end of time instant Tn. So we say for the off, offline simulation, this is faster than real time. Why? In the second one at the bottom, this is a slower than real time. Why? Because the solution for the, the, the expressions of the system, the function of all variables solution can be identified after Tn, right? After the simulation time step. So it seems that the, the, your simulation is slower than the real time. So uh, the, the conclusion is that, for example, uh, the, the, the accuracy and fidelity of the result would be under question. For example, if you are dealing with the fast dynamics in your system, right? Then, for example, for measurement system, you are missing some measurements, some data. For example, in the, the, the data analytics, you have seen a lot, I have heard a lot related to, to the missing some information or bad data. You know, if you do the offline simulation, definitely it could be slower or faster. Uh, neither of them are, are quite precise uh, representation of the dynamics of your system. Uh, because the only way is to do the actually, and also the computation time. For computer science, when you do the analysis, the computation burden or time uh, on the embedded hardware is another actually interesting point. Obviously, if you not do the real time uh, testing or simulation, it would be longer. Why the most bottom solution is exactly the synchronized. That's what we call the, the, the real time solution. You see, all the variables of the system, the function would be identified and solved at the exactly end of each time step, right? And also the same for the next step ahead. So in this manner, the accuracy of the computationals not only depends on the, the, the precise dynamic representation of the system, but also uh, it depends on the length of the time used to produce that, that, uh, that result. If, because for the like PV system, for renewable generation, we are using a lot of this uh, power electronics, uh, very high speed or fast uh, switching uh, electronic devices. So we need simulation time a step even to be considered as one microsecond, right? Not even millisecond. And then that's the, the actually the strong contribution or powerfulness of, of the real-time simulators. So in this way, we can accurately uh, replicate as much as possible. Of course, nothing is 100% perfect, but at least based on, based on the existing technology could uh, simulate and get more insight and thoughtful related to the, uh, the, the physical counterpart of the, if your system is airplane, if your system is like a cybersecurity, 
matters, if it's um, cyber attacks, if it's uh, power and energy systems, integration uh, to the distribution systems, and so on. That's actually the, the key part of uh, the, the technology behind the real-time simulation uh, requirements. For example, uh, heal means that hardware in the loop. As I said that it could be, for example, external hardware can be integrated uh, into the closed loop running into the, 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 the virtual model uh, runs into the Opal RT platform, for example, hardware in a real time manner. Just give you some example. In the past, for example, we, we had to, for example, use the power electronic systems is everywhere, almost in every applications we have these power electronic systems could be run uh, with uh, like a one kilohertz um, PWM signal and then you will see the switching. So the technology for power electronics uh, demand for higher switching uh, frequency to, for example, deal with some or reduce the, the power density or, or uh, harmonics, something like that. And then we need to even achieve time a step below one microsecond. Then uh, that's the technology of Opal RT. They have the CPU. You can run the uh, slow dynamics of the system on CPU uh, in the range of like a, a millisecond or 100 microsecond. And then the FPGA is even one or below uh, one microsecond uh, simulation time steps. That's more powerful actually uh, than the, 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 the at least the previous technologies we had. So that's the... Uh, we use therefore the FPGA. The other skill set for the or, or contribution of the Opal RT simulation is that you don't need even to uh, be very knowledgeable related to the VHDL programming or uh, quite uh, actually uh, be expert on uh, F FPGA analysis performance and so on. If you model, for example, Opal RT is compatible with MATLAB Simulink. When you develop your model on Simulink, and then when you run it and execute it, it would be actually without any, any writing of, of HDL code, it could be um, compiled or executed on powerful FPGA uh, boards. And then uh, in, in your very tiny, uh, like one microsecond uh, simulation time a step to, to better actually uh, simulate your uh, system of interest. So the, the workflow is that you have a host computer and then you model your circuit with uh, some existing um, tools like MATLAB Simulink and then you, uh, you execute that on the real-time simulator, Opal RT. There are multiple platforms, but we just go through one of them today. And then this Opal RT actually features with the very advanced uh, FPGA processor board. And then, of course, you can also um, integrate external hardware, whatever it could be, controller or device like electric motors and so on, or original battery energy storage or physical um, solar arrays into your system. And then the second thing is that there are some communication protocols and then each system could communicate with each other, for example. And later I'll, I'll detail the, the, some communication protocols and so on. So again, the key contribution of, of real-time simulator is that all the values should be sent to the external card or FPGA uh, uh, should uh, negotiate with the CPU actually. And then the values from the CPU to the external card or FPGA all should be done within one single time step should be uh, like one microsecond for very fast or should be up to like 100 or 50 microsecond as well. So that's the, the, the key contribution and also in a very well organized manner. So the, the key point is that even for the, this, uh, the, the technology suppliers for all real time uh, simulator is that the more values we exchange from the CPU for the external hardware and FPGU, FPGA, and then we need less time uh, could be actually remain for, for model computation. That's the, the now uh, still uh, the, the old, for example, Opal RT has made a tremendous amount of advancement, but uh, still they need to, um, to do, um, to reduce this, this time to be able to actually provide some uh, computational burden for the FPGA to be able to 
actually reach to the accuracy level as close as possible. So today, actually, we would have uh, later on the second half of this, this uh, training, um, we use the, the one, one type of Opal RT simulator, which is called OP5600. The, the most advanced one is OP5700. We have also in the lab, you will see, but basically the, the key requirements are the same, except as I said that the most recent generations are dealing with the very high um, so uh, actually sampling frequency or sampling time. Uh, this is uh, this, this platform, you will see the physical picture can handle sampling uh, time or frequency up to 100 uh, megahertz, but the, the most recent one, 5700, can handle up to 200 megahertz. So that's the only thing, but uh, more or less in terms of the, the, the IO monitoring, the, the analog, or digital I.O. input uh, output channels uh, are, are the same. And then the FPGA is from Vertex, uh, sixth generation, and some, some actually the, the CPU uh, specifications, as you will see. And also, you can connect the four uh, PCI slides into this, this uh, real-time hardware. And then when it comes to the, as I said that, the, the host computer uh, negotiate to the or communicate with the simulator using the the in an asynchronous manner using the TCP IP link, but the CPU and the FPGA in the board inside this this platform also negotiate to each other in a synchronized manner using the the fiber optical links, and then the this this uh, uh, Opal RT simulator can support the IEC sixty one eight fifty. Uh, communication protocols, um, the serial, and also the CAN bus protocol. We have very famous uh, military industrialized uh, protocol, MIL uh, 1553, actually, and also uh, the aeronautical uh, radio uh, ink, uh, it called um, AIRINC uh, standard. That's kind of digital information transfer system standard, technical standard is also supported by this platform. So we uh, can, can actually uh, run multiple uh, communication protocols for, for the host PC, your model, to negotiate with the real-time simulator as well. So that's another feature. Let's look a little bit into the what's inside the, this, this box. Um, obviously, you will see there is the, the upper side and also the, the lower side for this hardware platform. If you cover up and then you will see uh, that the upper section is usually includes the, the FPGA, all the FPGA board for processing of the model and execution and then the digital analog IO modules uh, in mezzanines. And also the lower section is basically the CPU RAM similar to your uh, personal computer, hard drive, PCI slots. And then uh, if, if we go to the very detailed uh, overview or cross section of, of this, this platform, you will see on the, the upper section, we have one um, FPGA board to handle the IO board actually from the host PC to the simulator. And then the second one is the most powerful, uh, actually Xilinx uh, Vertex 6 generation, the FPGA board, as you will see here to, to and then, the, the, the technology of Opal RT is also uh, provide another powerful feature, which is that they develop the EHS, which is the electronic hardware solver. You don't need to do any VHDL programming. Your model in the Simulink can be converted and compiled to the to the Opal to the FPGA processing board, and then afterwards can can negotiate to the external hardware and also back to your. Um, host species. So this is the main FVGA board. As you will see, some features like 32 digital I/O lines. Um, when it comes to the analog I/O lines, is 16 channels. But obviously, you can also parallel uh, two uh, multiple FVGA boards to be able to, um, to 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 if your system requires more I/O connections. And uh, as I said, that the sampling time for this specific. 5600 is 100 megawatt, 100 uh, megahertz sampling time, but the most recent can also handle 200 uh, megahertz. So the calculation inside the FPGA can reach up to even from uh, 250 nanosecond to 500 nanosecond, and then you can see 
uh, how how uh, powerful and beautiful would be this 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 platform for if you need the really accurate you know, higher accuracy and high fidelity for your simulations for very uh, critical and sensitive applications and the lower section as i said that includes the cpu um, so this is where the, the model can be executed without uh, if, if your model doesn't need a very like one micro a second simulation time step it still can be run in real time on your cpu and then uh, you will see some some ram or some power uh, supply and so on placed at the bottom of this this platform and then the io modules um, are organized in some uh, mezzanine modules uh, that that's the io modules can communicate between the host pc your signal you send from your laptop connected to the uh, opal rt all the digital output analogs um, and then the, the another view from the the front side uh, the back side of, of that uh, a hardware platform you will see the red and the green so the the red is actually connected to you will see this this uh, pin architectures and then uh, for for the for the analog side and then the green also uh, from the front view of the platform can be uh, reached or accessed uh, at the front side of of the the platform for the io boards the, the analog in and analog out so these are the, the analog signals channels and then we have also the the, the digital uh, io as you will see the digital are actually in 32 channel 32 bit channels and again as you will see uh, the the back side or rear view are shown in the red color and then the front view of the hardware you can actually put the rj45 cable into this this platform and then connect to the for example the the, the port you can actually monitor the waveforms on the oscilloscope for example in the lab or you can send the signals to your um, connected external hardware and this is the front view as i said that the the monitoring and then you will see and each uh, connector actually can drive uh, four signals, the, the 16 uh, I.O. Uh, boards, and this is actually the, the physical picture. You will see the, the front view of this uh, Opal RT hardware. So these analog actually signals can actually be uh, for the monitoring purposes. As I said that you can um, see the waveform uh, uh, using these PNC cables on, on the, the oscilloscope in the lab. And then the rear view, uh, the back side of, of the platform, are for the external hardware connections to the uh, to the real time simulator. And then this is what uh, the, you send the signals, and then these signals can be processed on the FPGA boards, and then the FPGA board can uh, convert using the the analog to using the digital to analog converter to, to monitor the, the analog or real world um, application signals. And then the, you, mod, you develop the model using the, the RT lab. RT lab is actually very close to the, to the what we model in the, the simulink. And then when you install the RT lab, you have RT lab IO facilities, you have a lot of modules. And then for example, you can uh, capture this, this, or, or drag and uh, drop this, this uh, block for the uh, uh, Opal RT communication IO blocks, and then uh, define what signals you want to send from your model to the to external hardware. So it, it's pretty easy. And then when, for example, you click on one of these, this uh, IO block, and then ask you to define the name, for example, this is some something you can go through the document. Uh, and then you can design if it is, for example, the, the synchronization mode is um, can be arranged in two ways. For example, if this is the master communication IO block, or you can put it on a slave uh, to, to be actually identified by FPGA and so on. And then this is the, the very uh, high level uh, picture of input and output. You have electrical signals. Usually the, the analog signals are uh, using the transducer converts to the electrical signals, the analog digital, and then uh, this is the, the entire uh, real-time simulator platform. And then we have an analog out and also digital out. And then you can obtain the analog on the monitor or the digital could be sent to your external device and do some uh, processing or, or data analytics or 
control or monitoring things. And then, as I said, that for example, the front view you see, you can extract the, the analog signals by using this, this uh, RJ41 uh, cables, uh, 45 cables, and then uh, connect these signals to the monitoring panel which is here, and then each panel can actually cover the four BNC connectors. As you will see here, there are four BNC connectors. You can capture that signal to the uh, oscilloscope to monitor the, the waveform you are designing. And then uh, you can also, using the, the computer, do some changes and then see the, um, the, the actually online changes uh, simultaneously on, on the oscilloscope and then for, for uh, data acquisition purposes as well, you can use the, the oscilloscope. So uh, this is my last slide, but again, similar to the first slide, um, I, I think uh, all the, especially electrical engineering and computer science students should work with these real-time simulators. Uh, this is the real picture based on the, what I did um, last year and the, the year before in New York. Um, the, the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority as part of New York government developed the New York Advanced Grid Innovation Lab for Energy. They called Agile Lab. This Agile Lab is full of actually three different or three existing real-time simulation technologies, Opal RT, I'm just put the Opal RT, RTDS and so on. And then they can actually do some monitoring control or performance operation of the system, even without need of any people to be in that side. So this is the something just uh, to, to actually um, draw your attention this is the technology, or I would say a skill set, everyone should, should uh, hold and carry, similar to the Python programming, for example, because this platform are quite user friendly. There are built in features. You can do the Python programming also using some of the other real time simulation technologies available in, in the market currently. And then um, for your professional career, these are the skill sets in demand for the future. So thank you very much. I think this is my, my last slide. I'm so happy if there would be any questions. And just to remind everybody, please put the questions in the Q&A box or in the chat and um, Sarah Pache will shoot them over to the presenters. Hello everyone. Currently there are no questions to be asked or to be answered. There's many questions to be asked always. Yeah, for, for, for computer science or people working on the communication or information systems, maybe as a additional information, for example, when you connect the, I don't know, external hardware could be controller. And then uh, sometimes you need the fast rate with very small latency, right? Because I know that the latency for the people working in this area is, is one of the, the, the challenges or interest. So this Opal RT actually, of course, it depends on the number of optical fiber this platform is used and the optical um, fiber optic links and also the complexity of the system. Then the latency I think this platform can handle is somehow from one to five microseconds based on the, the, usually it's more four to five microsecond because the one microsecond is, is not maybe so realistic for the medium to very advanced uh, system in terms of the complexity of your model. But uh, still it is in the range of a couple of microseconds, which could be really helpful for people doing the, the cybersecurity, for example, analysis, if you inject some signals to emulate that, for example, the, the attack, and then you can see how your controller or uh, solution system can respond to those kind of uh, uh, the, the applications or or investing or assessments actually. That's the one thing I just wanted to to mention. Okay, so thank you very much, Dr. Nademi. I think we are ready to move to the example where we will show how to integrate and how to communicate with Raspberry Pi um, with Poverty. So 
So if you're ready, please go ahead. Um, could you please give me access control? Um, you should you should have it. Okay. Yes, Stephen will continue. Hello, guys. I will be showing you guys how to interface with a Raspberry Pi and RT Lab with using Opal. All right, so uh, with the uh, Opal, you can communicate with uh, several uh, computers. And with this um, uh, example, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi. And Raspberry Pi, in many cases, could be used as a gateway to talk to the internet, talk to other computers. Um, so it's a great, great platform to get sensor readings, let's say, from an Arduino setup to the network and to a Opal that is simulating or is reading in data. So um, how to set up the uh, Raspberry Pi is to get a micro SD card either pre-downloaded with the Debian OS or download the OS with the image writer that Raspberry Pi provides you. Then um, you download Python onto the uh, Raspberry Pi. Then you jump down to um, opening up the Raspberry Pi. And from there, you enable the uh, SSH by going into the Raspberry Pi configure windows. Then from there, uh, you can go into MOBA Xterm. Basically, it is a terminal to communicate with other computers or uh, run computers headless by using IPs. So with this um, uh, picture here, uh, you get um, kind of like an overview of getting the IP address from the Raspberry Pi and naming it specifically so it can pop up later on. Then from there, um, you open up a uh, terminal or session and basically you type in your login information if you have it changed from the default to your own. Um, so we step down to the uh, checking of the uh, Python install. And if uh, you type in Python 3, you will get this output. Then from, uh, from there, you get to go into the, uh, um, the download from uh, overall team knowledge base. Then from there, uh, you have two Python scripts, a main and a server Python script. And you drag and drop into the Moto X term. And this will basically run the Python scripts remotely from your host computer to your slave computer. And from there, uh, you have to change out some of the uh, information uh, to the um, host and target IP addresses, and then get the um, uh, ports correct in there. So this right here, this picture shows what uh, you need to have done on the host side. Then uh, this is where we got hung up because of the firewalls that MSU has up. Uh, we could not go into this window here on the 
opal side. And um, basically from here on out, uh, we could not get any type of um, configuration, any type of uh, acknowledgement or anything of that sort because of the, uh, of the firewall. But if it did have you know, successful communication, it will have all these numbers, all these commands and matrices uh, coming up and you can change the numbers and the values to what you need on the uh, RT lab side. And from there, basically you'll have uh, acknowledgement sent out along with your commands if things were successful. And, uh, that's, and uh, that's, uh, that's about it. So this is um, this is Olga again. I'm just going to jump in and say that this uh, example um, was demonstrating how if you are a computer scientist or if you are a network um, professional, you could use Opal RT to integrate a simulation of any of your network code or any of your other codes that you might be writing on Raspberry Pi with Opal RT. So as Dr. Nademi um, explained at the beginning, there are, are multiple applications of Opal RT where you could demonstrate a real hardware application or you could just integrate with a software code that may be running on various platforms. And so Raspberry Pi could be one of those platforms. And since if you know how to connect to Raspberry Pi, then basically the world is your oyster, then you can connect to any other networked uh, piece of equipment. So I will stop here. And I understand we wanted to uh, take a break and also possibly take a picture with everybody who is attending the webinar. So I will hand this back to Brittany and see if there is a picture or if there are questions. Um, so because of the setup of this webinar, it doesn't look like we can actually allow them to turn on their, their cameras, um, unfortunately, but uh, we can definitely answer questions. So if anyone has questions, Sarah will be happy to shoot those over to any of our presenters. Sorry about the, um, the lack of photo. Um, if you don't have any questions, I think I think it's it's fair game to um, maybe take a, a quick break um, and reconvene at at one as it's shown on the schedule. Um, if you just need like a quick break, but um, do come back. And if you can't join us for the second half, uh, no worries. We'll be recording this, and it will be up on the New Mexico EPSCoR website in January at some point. Yes, and as the schedule shows, there are more real time integration examples, so uh, please stay on. We'll see you in five.
All right, everybody, it is exactly one o'clock. Um, I'm going to, uh, we can get started on our next example by um, Dr. Nadimi. I did want to remind everybody that if you have a question, please type it into the question Q&A box or the chat and um, we will shoot it over to the, over to the presenter to have them answer. Uh, we want this to be useful for you, so please do ask question, questions if you have them. Um, Dr. Nadimi, are you, you ready to go? Yes, of course. Outstanding. I'll stop sharing my screen and you can take over. <clears throat> yes, let me share my screen. Oh, hi, Dr. Hamid. Um, you just let me know. I will, uh, I will execute your files. Yes, yes. Okay, so it's me again. Hello, everyone. Yeah, as you will see, the, the third session would be to show you the, the simple demo and later it would be a little bit uh, larger demonstration based on the, the, the this macro grid model. But this, um, the, the system I'm talking about now is just the PV system and then integration with the battery uh, energy storage as one of the, the actually lithium ion battery as one of the technologies related to the energy storage devices. And then how we can develop the model. And then um, later on, Dr. Nataraj, my colleague, will execute the same model I'll show in the slides and then show you the, the model inside the blocks and then execute uh, uh, simultaneously on, on the afterwards on the Opal RT simulator I just described uh, at the beginning of this, this uh, webinar. So yeah, to see uh, what, uh, actually this is the different view or look into the, um, okay, so that platform is quite powerful, that the hardware is, is uh, actually strong to execute the, the very fast dynamics or very uh, tight requirements in terms of the operational requirement to be very close to the, the real world application. Uh, but there are some challenges as i said that this is something some skill sets you have to gain in in demand and it is quite a normal uh, or new norm for designing processes even in industry uh, so but before that um, at the when it comes to the modeling and the tool still there is a huge actually huge demand for developing still the very advanced models uh, and also uh, what kind of modeling approach or technique we, we need to um, at least adopt or, or adjust the, the, the existing models to be able to run it on, in real time manner. Because the, uh, at least in the power industry or in the control design solution, it was not uh, so long time that they used the real time simulations, right? Or this, this um, technology, uh, deployed in the past for, for uh, verification or validations on the prototype. We used to build, for example, in power electronics, we used to build the prototype or real test bed and then do the whatever we want to, to design or evaluate or assess. So, but we know that the, the uh, renewable energy uh, resources, the energy storage technologies, in general, the energy domain, the telecommunication, the IT, the, the, the also power electronics are like fast moving technologies. So it's seen, and for the, all the systems are now uh, considered to be integrated. And then uh, this impose a lot of challenges. First, we need to develop the model to be able to actually real time model to be able to run on the the available real-time simulators we have on the market. And then this integration of several systems into the, for example, the entire power grid or power networks is, is, is actually impose a lot of challenges for integration uh, from integration standpoint. And then, uh, for example, the battery energy storage, of course, the battery lithium ion batteries or other types of batteries like uh, lead acid or uh, nickel cadmium and so on they have been in around for years and then we have 
quite good models. But even the, the platforms like a, or, or simulation or tools like MassWorks or MATLAB simulating, they have some models, but they cannot actually do um, in real time to, to achieve that level of uh, actually accuracy or fidelity we need to, to do the, the really uh, outperforming uh, designs. And then, um, as I said, that also we should include some communication aspects because all of these distributed energy resources, the battery itself has its uh, some power electronics um, uh, converters, controller. The solar inverter also had features it, its own controller, wind, diesel generator, whatever we have, the, the traditional grids. The, the transmission systems and the data we need to exchange from the bottom to the up and then uh, onward uh, needs to consider some, some communication system to fulfill. So those kind of some aspects, actually this is still open challenges, but some aspects of those um, time um, instances or, or latency should be included in the, the, the simulation the, the simulation process or strategy we are going to, to develop at the scratch or in the beginning of our design. And then uh, when, we, when we, for example, look into the, the, the battery technologies or the model we have, uh, for example, as I said that um, it, it, the, the ongoing trends actually uh, call for, for accurate model and then the fast modeling. Uh, we, we, which is quite quite uh, significant for the like lithium ion batteries, which is currently one of the the widely used or type of batteries we usually use for microgrid or new energy power systems. And then the, how we do the control monitoring for charging discharging of the the batteries could be also this battery um, actually deployed in electric vehicle because batteries inside, obviously. So uh, that's the, 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 the challenges. So we, we need uh, an accurate model, the real-time model also for batteries, for PV systems, for example, for PV modules, for, you know, that the PV cell is just a very a small piece with the very low uh, capability of, in terms of power, uh, and then can be connected in series or parallel connections to create the, the the PV modules with the um, intended power level uh, capacity, for example, 10 kilowatt hour, 20 kilowatt hour, and so on. So the, how we can actually, uh, how, how do we model that, that systems with the very accurate um, PV cell model or PV module model, and then integrate with the, the battery, for example. This is just the two exemplary application, but this is basically the same thing. And also concerning to actually do some uh, appropriate control and also the communication protocols into the, the modeling design, because we should not deteriorate, for example, the, the communication requirements. You see, all are interconnected. And then when it comes to the or testing into the real time capability, then we need the real time model. As I said that uh, the, the model for, for example, for lithium ion battery, MATLAB actually provided is not very powerful when it comes to the real time simulation in terms of, for example, the accuracy, in terms of the computational time burden. If you need higher accuracy in your system uh, and uh, on the, some um, exemplary embedded platform, then you need to uh, be careful if, if that computational burden for that embedded platform can be able to handle the time consuming or computation time of the, the, the battery model, for example, or the PV model. And so and also the, the hardware resource usage. So I'm going to show you the, the, the PV system modeling and then uh, benchmark with the existing model mass work had like in the last uh, two recent version of, of a MATLAB simulating in 2018-19 uh, B revisions and then uh, compare each other in real time simulation execution on, on the uh, Opal RT platform we just discussed and then compare them in terms of the computational burden in terms of the, the hardware um, resource uh, consumption uh, to, to be able to run very simple circuit uh, to, to also uh, fulfill the 
time step, for example, for this system is, is 20 microseconds, for example. It's not that very fast, but it's still. And then uh, do some comparative analysis at the end, for example. So the mass work model, for example, for battery is, is really powerful, but for offline simulation. And then therefore we uh, use that one for benchmarking against the, the, the model we develop actually is just very simple based on the, the simple mass equations and expressions. And then we integrate the PV uh, panel with the PV module, let's say with its converter, and then integrated with or pair with the battery energy storage, and then we run it on the Opal RT. The other thing is that, for example, the challenge for industry is that if they use the Opal RT, but they shouldn't be limited themselves or the technology should not be limited to the only the Opal RT technology. We have, for example, the Typhoon, we have uh, currently the, the DS space real time simulator and so on. These are also being used in industry as well. So, the real-time model we should develop should be able to actually uh, meet what is called a cross-platform real-time simulation. The model should not be only uh, compatible with OPAL. What happened to the other two or three real-time simulators, right? This is a very significant limitation if we make the model, for example, to be compatible only on, on Opal RT simulators, right? And also the same thing, these real-time simulators, maybe in next two, three years, they were limited, for example, um, had some limitations. Uh, you cannot uh, build in like Python-based programming into your design. But now, since last two, three, or uh, four years, they just started to actually add those kind of built-in features to their, uh, their, their technology or to their hardware simulators to be able to do this kind of real-time analysis. That's the, uh, the purpose of this very, uh, actually, uh, uh, simple, uh, simulation and later on a demo to get some feeling, for example, what you can do uh, if you are doing the, the computer science, if, if you are also working on the, the power or energy area as an electrical engineering, uh, you can achieve at the end. And the, the other thing is that, for example, in the past, mass work, for example, provides the, the again, accurate model detail, but it would be like a, a holistic or general model for four types of the batteries, uh, not only um, lithium ion. Uh, nickel cadmium or, or uh, lead acid and so on. But usually- Dr. In the Nademi, if I may jump in here, we are down to 18 minutes left in your, in your demonstration. I think it is better to jump to the file. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually moving forward. So maybe I need uh, like 10 minutes and then we can leave some minutes for question and also five minutes for uh, Dr. Natraj to show the oh, demo. Yeah, I, I think maybe, um, we can show the demo because I hope there will be questions in the actual demo. Okay, so let me just uh, explain a little bit and then like two minutes and then we, we move to the demo because I have also, so uh, I, I don't want to dig into the how we model the like the, the simple PV cell and so on, but usually for, for the PV systems, we have a state of the charge. We, we need to monitor and control the state of the charge based on the operating point of the battery. And then the, the, to keep the output voltage of the battery actually within the, the acceptable tolerance or limits. And then you can develop the, for example, the, those kind of uh, model and the control system for the battery uh, to get the monitor the, the state of the charge and then you can also uh, integrate with some uh, MATLAB function or script into that one. This could be also uh, in, done in conjunction with the, the Python programming into the, the MATLAB and then execute on the, the real-time simulator. Then obviously there would be some algorithms for that to keep the, the voltage and the current uh, of, of the, the like PV panels um, corresponding to their um, uh, manufacturer specifications and data sheets. And then when you uh, develop the real time model, usually we have two sets of blocks or modules. That's the, the, the simulated model, as you will see on the left. And then the blue one on the right side is, is the, the actually the user uh, console. And then uh, if we look into the model, 
Then, for example, you can develop the model. As you will see here, the, the solar panel is shown in, in the light blue. And then we have the rest can be connected to the, the battery model from MATLAB Simulink. And then you need this uh, op communication, as I showed in the beginning of this webinar. That's the IO module. You can just uh, uh, drag and uh, from the RT lab software and then add what is the input and then the output can communicate with the hardware side. And then this is the detail of the, the PV cell model uh, for like a state of the charge uh, monitoring of, of the, 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 the battery as well and the PV. And then again, we can also look into the, we can build ourselves whatever we need to monitor uh, for, for the demo, and then what we need to capture and then uh, acqu to, to actually acquire the, the data uh, measurements on the, like uh, you can save it on your laptop or, or can be saved as a CSV or a spreadsheet format. This is the inside of the, for example, the, the console or the user model. When you run it, you can uh, actually extract the, the signals you define and then showed on the oscilloscope, or as I said that in the beginning, you can also uh, capture the, the analog signals and then monitor and uh, they can be visible on, on uh, oscilloscopes. And then if, if you need to set some set point as well, you can provide those set points for your, your system. And then we just, uh, as I said, that benchmark the, the analysis and then uh, compare with the mass fork or MATLAB Simulink model for the PV cell and also the against the proposed and also the, the existing one which was proposed in the, some literatures. And then for the battery also, you can see the state of the charge, for example, when the battery is discharged, what would be the, the benefit if we use the real-time model against the mass work model, which is more friendly with the offline simulation and, and, and so on. So at the end, as I said that, compare the, the mass work and then the proposed, uh, proposed PV model, you will see the memory usage. The, the other thing is that the computational time burden. And then you will see uh, the, the, the existing models we have on the available tools also are a little bit time consuming when it comes to implementation on, on embedded platform. So based on the, what I just explained to you, the, the models, I think now uh, Dr. Natraj can, can show the, the real time execution of, of this model on the Opal RT simulator. Yes. Let me stop sharing. Can you see my, my screen? Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, here, this is the folder, Dr. Rathana. I can just mention that this is the, the actually the first page view of the RT lab. So when you build the model on the Simulink, then you should incorporate it um, using the, the RT lab. And then you need this RT lab to be able to communicate with the Opal RT platform. Yes. Yes, this is the model file. Uh, in that model, it contains uh, PV module and uh, battery. I will show you that file. And uh, yeah, this is the real time simulation file. Here, in this, in main block, uh, it contains the real time system. Here, here we can see left side we have PV panel, um, including algebra uh, nonlinear equations between the PV voltage and PV current. And then this one, we can form it as like a current source. And then we have the boost converter. And then we have battery model. Okay. Now, yeah, this is the system. Now I will execute this file on Opal RT. Okay. Uh, for any um, for any software, it is the common procedure. Uh, first, uh, we need to compile the file and then load and then execute. Here, I'm just uh, compiling the file. PC can negotiate with the or talk or communicate with the real hardware, Opal RT hardware. Yes, 
yes okay now it is this file is compiling to check whether are there any errors in the file or not and also it will generate these some files uh, uh, to execute on the core of the opal rt so here we can see uh, for compilation it took around 1 minute 29 seconds okay now we can see there are no errors in the file and uh, we can load the generated files on the opal rt load yes it is loaded and we can execute the file okay now we can see the results here in console block and now now the system is running on the opal rt that is in real time okay now here we can see the pv side voltage and current waveforms and uh, these are the waveforms uh, corresponding battery side okay this is the state of charge second one battery current third one is the battery voltage yes okay just, just, just i would like to also add for example as you see you can use the same oscope you have in the simulink but the thing is that since it's running in the real time and then if if not uh, not rush please show the, the main circuit the the general overview the circuit and then you will see uh, for this one we have actually defined the 20 microsecond simulation time step since that oscope since it's running in the real time and because of lack of capacity then you will see some maybe it's some strange waveform on the oscilloscope but the better view uh, is is for the monitoring of the waveform is that when you actually captured it um on on the oscilloscope and then you can see very uh, high resolution you can go down to the very high resolution and details of the waveform to see for example the the tiny sections of the the waveform or you can also capture the the result or data measurements for example for computer science we can for example apply the fault for example on the output of the PV uh, panel or PV system. And then uh, the data can be uh, acquired and also uh, the extracted. And then for the computer science, usually the thanks to the very advanced machine learning, they can process a tremendous amount or huge amount of data sets and measurements. Then you can develop, for example, such algorithms to actually predict the failures and then uh, before failure happens, then we can, for example, disconnect the, the affected system, for example, the solar uh, system, right? To avoid damaging the rest of the, the physical damage or the rest of the system or uh, avoid the physical deterioration of the PV panels, for example. So this, this kind of activities can be done and you can actually exchange the data. You can store uh, lots of uh, the, the measurements uh, based on the different operating scenarios for, for the people who are working on the uh, developing the machine learning or data analytics algorithms. And then this, you see the, the, the block 
OPCOM is exactly um, the, the Opal RT actually uh, can communicate and then capture the, the analog data and then can be shown uh, or send the, the signals, the digital signals to, to, the, to the analog ones and then the analog IO can, uh, can be used for uh, monitoring or, or capturing the, the measurements. So can I move to my presentation? Is there any question? We just had one come in. Um, it's from Chris Scott. If you write a MATLAB script to control your Simulink model, is it possible to include the script in the RT lab compilation? Yes, actually this is the, the, the very recent uh, changes Opal RT uh, has made, I think since the last year. I believe it would be possible because uh, they, they have re realized that the Python script or, or programming is one of the key. And then uh, again, uh, they, they have made that changes and currently, yes, it's possible for you to incorporate your uh, Python script and programming, uh, whether that's the, the control or monitoring purposes. You, you can also write Python for capturing the measurement data as well. Wonderful, thank you. There are no further questions at this time. Yes, go ahead. Uh, please start with your presentation. Yes. Hi all, uh, my name is Natras. And uh, now uh, I will show the real-time simulation of AC and DC microgrids. Okay, now I will show the first uh, uh, system description and then uh, uh, I will explain some control strategies for uh, inverter and DC-DC uh, DC converter for the DC and AC microgrid application. And then I will show the two uh, real-time simulation examples. Uh, those are developed by me only. And... Uh, First simulation file is the related to AC microgrid and second file is related to the DC microgrid. Okay, now first, um, first real time simulation system is uh, somewhat uh, like this here. Uh, generally microgrid, uh, as you know, it is a collection of distributed energy resources and loads and that can operate, uh, it's like a, it's a part of a, a main grid. And uh, here, if you see the, this is the IEEE 13 bus system. And uh, uh, let's say here, uh, I have incorporated like uh, solar PV on 611, 652. And 611 on, it's like a single phase uh, solar PV source. And 652 also single phase solar PV source. And at 680, uh, it is like a 100 kVA, um, inverter and at 675 uh, 100 kva three phase inverter now here if you see the let's say if you incorporate this circuit breaker between 632 and 671 let's say if there is any uh, fault on the uh, upstream side that is on 650 bus uh, that circuit breaker we can open and remaining lower part we can operate like a um, system like uh, that is in micro microgrid. That means that is in island mode operation. Let's say if you close the circuit breaker, now whatever energy is there in the microgrid, we can feed into the main grid. That is nothing but grid connected mode. Okay, now for, um, for implementing this system uh, in real time on Opal RT, what we need, like uh, first we need like uh, line models. Here we can see there are like uh, line models, nothing but here. There is a overhead lines and underground lines between the here buses. Here I have used three phase pi section model for uh, line models. And here, and also we need some load models. Those are nothing but constant impedance type loads, constant PQ loads, and constant current source type loads. And uh, uh, coming to the renewable energy source based uh, uh, interfacing inverter that is nothing but here we can call like a uh, dzu distributed generation unit 2 okay now here in this um, inverter control we uh, 
we had to implement like uh, single phase uh, version like control strategies and uh, three phase version control strategies i will show you that control strategies later and uh, here you can see here i am not going into deep why because uh, there is a time constraint presentation here that's why i will explain uh, uh, overview of the control strategies here we can see let's say uh, single phase solar pv uh, here this is the uh, dc unit that is a single phase here uh, dc side either solar pv or battery source or wind energy anything here here for this uh, let's say if you want to uh, integrate this inverter uh, with the utility main grid okay we uh, we need some control strategies like uh, uh, power con active power and reactive power control strategies and also uh, we need some phase lock loop technique so pll uh, pll is a technique uh, it uh, we will get the information of the utility grid that is the ac voltage template that is the magnitude and frequency and the angle okay now here if you see the um, control strategy here let's say this is the active power uh, reference equation uh, that is the of of vd times id let's say vd is the constant why because let's say if there is a utility grid grid side voltage if you assume the constant vd is constant let's say if we want to feed the some power uh, into the grid uh, let's say uh, 10 kilowatt reference based on that we will get the id reference commands and and uh, here there are uh, some internal current control uh, loop for that internal current control we need i i reference that i reference will get from the uh, based on the inverse power transformation technique okay now here um, uh, here i have i have used the like stationary reference frame based control strategy uh, to implement this control strategy here okay this is the control strategy regarding single phase uh, version let's say uh, if it is like a three phase version uh, let's say uh, let's say uh, if are using like a three phase inverter here also we need to control the active power and reactive power and also Uh, we need utility grid voltage information that is by using the uh, pll technique here uh, here i have assume like uh, utility grid side voltage is unbalanced so if voltage is unbalanced we cannot use conventional techniques uh, to get the information of utility grid ac voltage so we need some advanced technique pll type here i have used double synchronous reference frame based pll technique to get the information of positive sequence voltage template okay now here uh, here this is the active power reference command and this is the reactive power reference command okay these are the equations for unbalanced voltage conditions here vd positive id positive is nothing but uh, uh, positive sequence component in the synchronous rotating reference frame okay now here if you see um, here by using the inverter uh, we there is a one uh, one restriction like we need to pump the power it's like a balanced power that means positive sequence power only uh, we have to inject into the grid so for that uh, for that here if you assume the negative negative sequence component to zero we will get the id positive reference iq positive reference here id positive reference iq positive reference and also id negative and iq negative reference so once we get the reference commands id reference and iq reference so this is the like a positive sequence current control this is like inner current control loop and we will get the some modulation index and then we can generate the pulse uh, get pulses by using the sinus solar pulse modulation technique and this is the way uh, we can feed the we can feed the power into the grid under the unbalanced voltage condition okay this is the control strategy here i have used double synchronous reference frame based current control strategy okay and then next yeah 
before going to the show, before going to show the uh, real time simulations of uh, ac microgrid and dc microgrid i would like to show the some um, some research objectives uh, like uh, we are uh, um, we are working on in the lab here here if you see the here uh, um, here opal rt5700 this is the opal rt real time simulator and here uh, this is the host pc okay now now let's say here uh, our main objective is uh, we have, uh, we need to implement this iwb 13 bus system on the opal rt okay let's say by using the sim power system model blocks and rt lab model blocks we can uh, implement this entire power system model on the opal rt and then we can run in the real time manner okay that is a it's like a software in loop actually that is the thing let's say let's say if this system uh, want to coordinate with the real physical hardware systems like uh, uh, let's say some part of the system is on the opal rt and uh, so, uh, like a, like a dc inverter is on the uh, external side that is the real time uh, it's like a real physical hardware system okay here right side we can see here we have in the lab uh, n phase micro inverter that is a, like a si single phase version actually but here uh, we are working on one research object is like a hybrid solar pv and energy system and uh, this research work uh, uh, working like uh, dr cizo and myself we are working on this research object too and this is the thing hybrid solar pv and battery by using the commercial uh, micro inverter and then uh, and then we have implemented uh, uh, grid forming inverter physically in the lab here this is the like a three phase inverter and uh, Okay, this work uh, we have done like Javier and myself uh, we have done this one grid forming inverter uh, implementation, and we have in the lab here uh, lab world test bench. That means here this test bench uh, uh, having like a um, synchronous generator and inverter and loads, and then we can uh, uh, we can implement residential. Um, residential uh, distribution system that is uh, like a secondary distribution system we can implement in the lab here and also uh, we have the relays uh, um, to do the, some analysis on the uh, fault production production analysis okay why I, why i am focusing here research objectives um, let's say all these physical hardware uh, systems we can integrate through the power amplifier uh, to the uh, system on the Opal RT. So, so in this way, uh, we can uh, we can run the some part of the real time, uh, some part of the system in real time on the Opal RT, and some part of the system on the external side. Okay, this method is nothing but this method we are calling like a power hardware in the loop. Power hardware in the loop. And uh, and one more, uh, we have done some work on the rapid control prototyping. So rapid control prototyping means here, this, let's say this is the inverter, grid forming inverter. This inverter is externally outside, but getting the uh, control strategy of this inverter uh, is uh, executing on the Opal RT, okay? In this way, this method we can call it as like a rapid control prototyping. Okay, and uh, one more, uh, uh, I'm working on research objectives like uh, cyber communication. Here, here, um, here I have implemented uh, some XB modules outside that are interfacing with the Opal RT through analog IOS and digital IOS. And here, what happened here? Uh, uh, let's say, let's say, uh, system is on the real time, but control, control part is on the external side. So this method we we are calling like a control hardware in the loop. Here, um, 
here i'm concentrating like a uh, cyber uh, cyber cyber uh, attacks uh, so and uh, cyber uh, models cyber attack models and also um, here uh, i'm just uh, implementing some resilient control strategies uh, that should be work any type of communication topology okay this communication topology is outside thus uh, that communication topology is outside by uh, we can use uh, uh, raspberry pi uh, or otherwise xb communication device so this communication system we can implement outside that communication system we can integrate with the real time um, simulator the system and uh, in that way uh, in that way we can uh, we can do the some resilient control strategies uh, and uh, cyber uh, uh, security uh, some research work we can do and also here this is physically this is the we are implementing like communication layer and also we can use some uh, open net software or ns3 simulator uh, we can we can form it like a uh, co simulation it's like a co simulation that means here we can use one software uh, like uh, uh, we can implement communication topology by using some uh, communication type software and uh, that software we can integrate with the opalrt and in that way we can uh, uh, we can analyze some uh, uh, latency issues uh, in the communication topology uh, would there any effect on the control strategy of the uh, of the inverters these inverters okay now okay now i will show you the real time simulation uh, real time simulation on the uh, in software loop method only okay here i will show the first uh, ac microgrid system okay this microgrid is connected in like uh, grid tied connect grid tied mode uh, why because uh, due to the time constraint i am just showing the uh, let's say if the microgrid is connected in the grid connected mode how it is operating i will show that thing and then next uh, real time simulation i will show the dc microgrid okay dc microgrid uh, with the uh, with the droop control technique and uh, and and secondary control strategies okay now now i will shift to the real time software okay now here first i will show you the ac microgrid uh, that is a i2b 13 pi bsi here yes let's say if we if you want to uh, run the file on the opal rt okay we need to follow some steps so for executing the file on the opal rt uh, we have to um, we have to create blocks on the top hierarchy level like uh, this is the system that is uh, like a main master and second one is the like console let's say if you have uh, if you want to let's say let's say in this manner uh, in this manner that means this main system is executing on the one core okay one core uh, of the oplt here uh, we have eight cores okay similar type of these systems we can execute uh, on the eight cores okay here core one let's say if you want to execute sec uh, if you want to execute some files on the uh, core two okay and uh, next sub block we have to create slave mode ss underscore any file name okay now here uh, um, i have used only one core that means uh, that name of the block is main sm underscore any file name okay now here we uh, here you can see the i2b 13 bus system and with uh, some distributed energy resources 
here we can see IEEE 13 bus system having like uh, we need some live models. Okay, these are these things I have implemented by using the three phase uh, five section model here, and also we need some uh, like a PPU type loads here. Okay, all these uh, like uh, these load blocks uh, are available in the some uh, sim power system uh, library, and these things live models are uh, developed uh, on my own actually by using the three phase five section concept, and uh, here first we will see the single phase inverter okay and here uh, you can see the uh, single phase uh, this is the like a single phase h bridge how bridge h bridge and followed by the lc filter to attenuate the high frequency components and then followed by the one transformer to in integrate the um, low voltage distribution filter that is the 4.16 kv and here for control strategy for this inverter here okay let's say if you want to operate the inverter in the grid connected mode we need the uh, information of the grid voltage so for that uh, here i have used the uh, sogi based pll technique sogi means second order generalized integrator method okay okay this is the um, model for that uh, PLL technique. Here we will get the information like uh, uh, frequency and maximum voltage. That means peak voltage. Okay, once we have that information, we can implement the uh, control strategy for the single phase inverter. Okay, here, um, here I am just uh, giving some reference command from the console. Okay, once uh, once we have the active power reference command, we can generate the ID reference command. Okay, this is the ID reference command, and then inner current control loop here, and then after that, uh, this modulation index so we can here comparing with the high frequency carrier waveform. This is the like a PWM technique, sinusoidal pulse width mod model technique uh, to generate the pulses uh, to the inverter switches. Okay, now this is the single phase. This is the single phase inverter is operating in the like a grid connected mode only. Okay. And now next I will show you the three phase inverter control strategy. Okay. Under unbalanced voltage condition. Okay. Why? Because here if you see uh, IEEE 13 bus system having the like loads, PQ type, constant imprints, constant current source. But all these are like a uh, asymmetric uh, load configuration so and also asymmetric line imprints due to that here um, at the bus voltage we, you, you will see the unbalanced voltages so let's say if you want to integrate the three phase inverter uh, with the uh, with the distribution feeder so we need some uh, some resilient control strategy to operate the inverter in the active power and reactive power reference control mode. Okay, now here you can see here uh, three phase inverter, uh, three phase inverter, and then followed by the filter to attenuate the frequency components. And then here, uh, here DC side voltage is 700 volts, uh, so to generate the 480 volts at the AC side here, but here 4.16. Volt 4.16 kilovolts on the distribution feeder. So we need one transformer. The transformer is in the uh, delta to star ground configuration. Okay. And uh, here we will see the inverter control. So here inverter control. Here first we will see the PLL. Okay. This is the three phase PLL. But this is not conventional control strategy. This is the like a uh, decoupled synchronous reference frame based PLL. So first we need to decompose the actual voltage to the positive sequence and negative sequence. Once we get the positive sequence components, we can use the conventional PLL technique. So here we are getting the positive sequence voltage and then we can decompose into the DQ. And uh, once, uh, once we once if we regulate the quadrature voltage to zero, we will get the um, positive sequence voltage frequency mag frequency and magnitude here. 
Okay, once we're done with the uh, three phase PLL and then when we have to implement the uh, inverter control, here we can see inverter control is uh, here uh, uh, we need to regulate the active power and reactive power. And for that, uh, this is the like a control strategy, uh, current control strategy. And here first we need to sense the uh, inverter output currents uh, and then we need to decompose that currents into the positive sequence and negative sequence. And this is the positive sequence, uh, um, positive sequence current, current control strategy. Here lower side is the negative sequence current control strategy. Okay, here, uh, uh, here objective is we are uh, uh, attenuating this negative se sequence components to zero. We are injecting only positive sequence components into the distribution system. Okay. And okay, that is the inverter control. Okay, now uh, now we have uh, okay now we have done with the simulation file with the uh, like a actual uh, distribution system model that is the IEEE 13 bus system and also single phase uh, uh, distributed generation units and also three phase distribution generation units. Okay, now we will see the um, how to implement this file on the real time. Okay, for that first we need to uh, first we need to compile the file and then load and then execute. Same procedure. Okay, here I'm just uh, compiling the file and also it will generate the files uh, to be loaded on to the popular tip. Okay, now it is uh, compiling the file. Are there any errors in the file or not? It is checking. But because it is the large file, that's why it is taking more time to compile this. Here uh, we can see um, it took around two minutes, 49 seconds for the compilation. Okay, once it is done, uh, next load this file. Okay, loading done. 
and next execute this file on the opal rt now it is executing okay now this file is running on the opal rt here we can see here and uh, and one more thing here uh, I, have, I have given the simulation step size is uh, 20 microsecond okay and uh, here we can see the uh, bus voltages Yes, we can see here bus voltage is here, and and here we can see the per unit fashion in the bus voltage is here. Here we can see per unit voltage. Is. Let's say here at 632 bus, so there is a um, phase A voltage is around 1.04 per unit. Phase B is around 1.018 something, 1.017 on the phase C. Okay. And then we can see the yes back to power and drag to power here. We can see here now. Here, uh, just see here. I have given the hundred kilowatt. That is a reference command I have given here. And here you can see uh, at six eighty bus there is a three phase inverter. Okay. The three phase uh, DC unit here we can see uh, it is uh, around 100 kilo 100 uh, kilowatt here and here react to power reference command I have given the zero so corresponding here approximately it is uh, zero okay similarly here we can observe at 675 bus there is also one more uh, three phase uh, DC unit okay for this also I have given the 100 kilowatt kilowatt okay and here we can change and we'll see whether that is regulating properly or not okay okay now here uh, here i'm changing the value at 680 bus that is uh, 250 kilowatt. Okay. 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 Here we can observe here at 680, there is a drop in the active power 100 kilowatt to the 50 kilowatt. Okay. There is a reference. But, uh, but, and also you can observe here uh, at 632, that is like a source side. Here uh, at the renewable side, it is decreasing the power means uh, at the source side, it will increase. Here that minor change we can observe here, active power. This is the like uh, active power in phase A, phase B, phase C, actually here, this is the individual phases here power. And, and also I'm just, uh, I'm just changing the reference value at 675. Let's say suddenly drop to some um, 20 kilowatt. Suddenly there is a cloudy situation on the solar side. Let's see. Here we can observe at 675 bus, there is a sudden change 100 kilowatt to the 20 kilowatt. That means, that means here um, uh, three phase inverter control strategies and uh, single phase inverter control strategies are working with respect to the um, with respect to the uh, scenarios on the renewable side and also load side also. Okay. And now this is the regarding that uh, microgrid simulation. And uh, this, this, this thing we can call it as like an active distribution uh, system. Why? Because uh, there are some active components on the system. We can call it as like an active distribution system. Okay. I'm just stopping the simulation here. Okay, now I will show I will show you the DC microgrid. Um, and we're actually coming up on time. Uh, we've got about a minute left. Yes, I will show. Uh, I think it's. Uh, 
at least I will explain that file. Okay, now uh, this is the DC microgrid, and uh, let's say uh, one minute. I will okay. Here we can see. Okay, this is the uh, this is the DC microwave system. This uh, this is the system I have implemented on the uh, Opal RT uh, by using the same power system block models and uh, RT lab models. Here um, you can see here DC units, DC DC converters based. Okay, all these are connected in parallel, and corresponding control strategies like primary control is nothing but uh, it's like a group controlled uh, voltage source. Uh, by using the primary control, we can operate this converter in the group control voltage source. Okay, by using the secondary control, uh, we can uh, correct the uh, voltage deviations uh, across the DC bus. Okay, this is the secondary control. And here I have used, this is the primary control. Here we can see the inner current and outer voltage loop technique and uh, uh, with the group control. And this is the primary control. This is nothing but group controlled voltage source. And secondary control is nothing but here I have used uh, average voltage and average current control technique. And also here um, I have used uh, some consensus based algorithm technique for uh, regulating the uh, for regulating the DC bus voltage and also uh, improve the power sharing across all the you know all the converters. Okay, this is the secondary control. Now I I just move to the simulation file. Here we can see here uh, uh, I have implemented like uh, four converters here. Here um, all four converters inputs uh, having battery source and the main DC uh, DC network that is with uh, DC DC converters I have implemented by using the EFPGS SIM that is uh, EHS solver. Here we can see that file. Yeah, this is the file. Okay, four converters connected in parallel through the cable impedances. Okay. Okay, this is the um, EFPGA file. Okay. And I'm sorry to interrupt, um, but just so we respect our attendees' time because um, we're two minutes over, um, I'm going to say that people can definitely head out if you need to. Um, sorry for, for going over time. Um, and um, Dr. Uh, well, Net Netra. I can't say your name. I'm so sorry. But if do you think you could maybe wrap up in the next three minutes yes, for this? Yes, yes, definitely. Awesome. Okay. Now, yeah. Now this is the system here, and now here we'll see the control for each DC unit. Here we'll see here inner current control loop here, outer voltage control loop here, and also here uh, this is the um, this is the group technique. And also here, this is the primary control technique. Okay, this is the primary control uh, to operate the converter in the group controlled voltage source. Okay, and and this control, this secondary control, is for the to improve the DC bus voltage and uh, power sharing all the inverters across all the inverters. Here uh, we can see the. This is the average control technique. Here I have used uh, different average technique that is the conventional averaging. And also I have used dynamic consensus uh, algorithm. This is the for current. And also I have, um, I have modified something like a dynamic consensus average technique here for improving the voltage and power sharing. Okay, this is the current side and here Voltage side also similarly I have implemented same conventional averaging and uh, consensus based algorithm and also modified dynamic consensus algorithm here. Okay, okay, this is the cyber point of view actually. And uh, here, yeah, this is the main system. Now I will execute this file. We will see the some results. Okay, now I'm just uh, compiling the file. It may not take more time, I think.
Ah, and it's so close. Um, but I am going to have to call it, unfortunately, um, because we are at 2.05 after. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I wanted to thank all of the presenters. Um, and I also want to remind everybody that we're going to have another webinar in January. Um, and it will be looking at GitHub. Um, so go ahead and uh, log off for now. We want to wish everybody a wonderful winter break. And again, thank all of the presentation the presenters for their work on this today. Thank you so much.